<laughs> Hi. <laughs> I'm coming at you from Carpo's living room, Joshua's living room. This is my humble abode. You can see my wall, my reflection of my records, and that's about it, but that's the tour. I don't do videos inside too often, and the reason why I'm usually out in the garage is because I, it's the only spot in the house where it's even somewhat quiet, where I can isolate myself. and. Uh, I'm usually, I spend most of my day following the kids around, living the average American life, you know, I guess, the imagined er, uh, American parent's life, if you will. And during that routine of life, where we are going from thing to thing, um, it's easy to look in from the outside, let's see if you're a non-parent, look into a parent's life and think, I, you know, how can they do that? Or maybe to look in and say, I totally want that. I would love to do that or rather do that. That each perspective on having children is different. Sometimes people get older and they say they wish they would have had kids. Sometimes they say they're glad they didn't have kids. And this isn't about children. This video is about society. And I'm starting off with using children as the example because raising children puts you in a state where you cannot accomplish many of the things that you otherwise would as a uh, seeker, let's say. I'm a seeker. I'm a seeker of truth. I'm looking for wisdom. I'm looking for understanding in life. And to clarify this, I'm not seeking any particular thing, nor do I have this illusion that I'm going to define what it means to be alive or prove to myself everything in the universe or that I think mankind has any type of capacity to understand it all. No, I'm a seeker in the sense that I'm seeking information and I call it information, not knowledge because knowledge is knowing and there are many things we just can't know. Information means it is informing. It is forming us, forming our opinions, forming our personalities. Information is something that helps us to be better people because it helps us to understand the world around us. So my seeking of knowledge is merely so I can understand the world better and use that in order to better my own life. And in the end, it's a selfish motive. I want to be happy. But I don't want to be happy built on false principles or weak foundations. As in the last video, I mentioned the dream I had last night. Well, it wasn't a dream, it was a DMT vision. But I was just uh, kind of laying in bed and I saw this castle, this, this stone building with me and all my family in it, all my friends. And the metaphor, metaphorical foundation, you know, stone came out and the whole thing collapsed and I realized that I have to build myself on integrity, which is integrating, and information, which is forming who I am strongly enough and have a strong enough foundation to where in the future I can't be swayed or broken. Now this is important to me because during the time when I have kids, when all I'm raising my children, uh, and the reason why I brought that up is that while you may, I might, may not be able to go out and wander and travel the world and, and uh, do many of the things that are, that some people feel trapped as parents, is what I'm saying. That, like they wish they could explore and do more. I don't feel that way. I feel like my children are my contribution, one of my contributions to this world. That if I can raise them as great kids, then they can help to inform others about how to live. And the key being here is that I'm not trying to teach anybody how to live or what to do to make themselves better people. I'm trying to say what works for me and what doesn't work for me. And what works for me is being honest with myself, building strong foundations, being disappointed if something I believe turns out not to be true, 
trying not to be abusive to other people when they're rude, even when they're really rude, but I find myself still doing all these things and still working on them, and in that way I'm building my integrity. Having the internet is, has changed the way that we experience the world. So a stay-at-home dad, such as myself right now, uh, I can do my gardening, I can come in, surf a little bit, do a little bit of news checking or whatever, check out my videos, answer some comments, connect with the world around me and uh, without having to go out into it. Unfortunately, the downside to that for many people is that that's the only way they experience the world. So their information is built on all that they've learned online and nothing that they've experienced in the world. I remember Manley Hall saying something once. He said, and I don't know if this was a quote from someone else or himself, but he said, a man can spend a lifetime studying all about Egypt and the pyramids, yet he could learn more in a week of being there than he ever could by reading about it. And this is the same way for everything immersing yourself in things. Uh, this is why when I learned about sacred geometry I started drawing pictures and found connections and started to understand symbols in my own way. This is why when I got into numerology and people started talking about the number nine and you know Fibonacci sequence I got out my pad and pen and I started writing things down and I started playing with numbers and now I can kind of understand that why nine is such an important number and, and, and it was just these little informing articles that build me up to understand what I think I understand in my reality. You know, people talked about chemtrails. I thought they were, you know, there was this huge chemtrail, you know, conspiracy in my sky where I live just because they do do weather engineering in certain places. So I did my research, I actually went outside, I documented the weather, I checked out the patterns, watched the dissipation. When I want to understand how nature works, I go out in the woods. I talk to the woods. I ask nature what it expects, what it wants from me. You know, pick up more litter than I leave, that kind of stuff. Leave no trace. Why? You know. You could bury litter. Nobody would ever know. It's probably not going to hurt anything. <laughs> you know. It's the little things we do because they matter is the point. And I'm not sitting here saying that I do these great things. That's not my point. The thing is, I feel like this is how I experience the world is through actually actual experience through going out and doing the work but I still lack it motivation to do the work that I'm obligated to do for society dude it drives me nuts I have so much motivation to do certain things I get into a project I get very focused on it and it becomes my passion for a while and the reason why I could never say take a particular college course and become passionate at one scientific thing because I like to be a scientist I'd like to get involved in in physics and some things like that uh, and go back to school maybe some people might say you're 40 you know you can't be a physician there are no limits in my mind uh, for all I know I could live to be 120 with modern science and health I might be well well functioning into my 90s I mean I, I have no idea where I'm gonna, how long I'm gonna live but I know that I, I can do anything I want at this point or any other point. I'm not limited by what society is telling me to do. And I'm not limited by what the commercials tell me or the media tells me. I don't believe the bullshit that I hear on television. But at the same time, I don't believe the bullshit I hear on the internet because it's become preposterous, out of hand. You know, the reptilian thing, the conspiracies about the flat earth and all these things that are always coming up the Holocaust deniers, you know, that everything's a hoax. Um, I started to study those really carefully and find that it became trust issues a lot of the time with people. Uh, many of the people who claim that everything's a lie or everything's a conspiracy are the first ones to tell everyone they're a shill or they work for someone else. It's a distrust issue because the people out there that I see that are loving and caring and trust, to those who are, are angry about the world, they may seem like these people are sheep or ignorant, but really they're just people who have learned to live with the fact that the world is fucked up. Pardon my language. If you have children in the room, which I doubt. <laughs>
what kid would want to listen to this guy right so it is a fucked up world but at the same time it's only fucked up because of the way we perceive it and if you choose to perceive a fucked up world then that's what you're going to get and those are the parts that you're going to get I mean people you know I sit here and I try to be as humble as possible I try not to be you know point finger pointing I do tend to sometimes pick at certain things aspects that bother me about religion or politics but really I try to keep a neutral ground I'm very open-minded I give credit credit to to anybody who can prove to me that something's true with empirical evidence and look at that why does that matter because it matters to me I'm not saying it matters to everyone that everyone needs truth or proof some things are felt in my heart some things I don't need to prove I don't care if people believe them or not I believe that there is a creation that we are part of a creation that is unfolding it, I, I think of the universe as a flower okay it's, it's in its blossoming stage and after trying to after hearing people talk about history and you know what humanity was and hearing this and that and this and that I've realized that all that matters is the symbolism and this would be the key message that I want people to take away from this if anybody's listened this far is that if you're confused about all the bullshit that people talk about with aliens with conspiracies uh, the idea that everything's an illusion you're not alone everyone's confused you're either confused or you've settled on believing what somebody else has told you remove the words don't worry about uh, for example the Bible if you're confused about the Bible don't worry about the English words in the Bible and don't even worry about translating it into Hebrew which is what I once thought would be you know more helpful of course from that would be helpful for people if they're trying to really understand it but from the Hebrew point take the symbols and further reduce it down to the metaphors the archetypes which become the symbols something like a triangle with a line through it or a, you know a star or you know a square all these things representing various degrees of existence you know triangle being the you know smallest possible shape the sm fewest sides representing the trinity there's just so much to learn and the reason i bring all this up really is because there is a deep 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 side of youtube that has to do with occult knowledge uh, you know people speaking of demonic entities and baphomet and all these uh, ideas that madame blavatsky and and uh, i have an alistair crowley lp it's actually called voices of the great beast you know i bought it out of interest because i'm not fearful of evil entities or good entities because I don't understand how it all works yet I'm still cautious and I'm open-minded I wouldn't allow myself to be opened up to like doing obviously evil chance I guess what I'm saying is that I know that there's something going on I know that there are good and bad energies I don't understand how they work exactly but I do know one thing is that if your energy remains good and your intent remains pure and if you're searching for the right thing you're going to find it if you immerse yourself in negativity and you go onto the internet every day and all you're searching for is whether there's a new 9-11 or a new conspiracy that's all you're gonna find and it's just like they talk about you know people want to solve the problems of the world well we're the consumers if we want to change the way things are then we have to stop consuming the products that we're complaining about you know people complain about the iPhone factories and how the workers are committing suicide we'll stop buying iPhones well it's the same way with the media and with the information and the bad news stop buying into it doesn't mean you have to ignore it just means you have to be moving on to something greater so I hear a siren in the background that's my head out cue <laughs> that means they must be after me I think that uh, the Illuminati heard me talking about them and they're at my door. Really, I'm out of time. I got 15 minutes to make a video. So, I wish you all luck and peace and love. And let's get along and figure this shit out together. 
It's time. Grow up, you 